In this In Vivo 15 for Mac tutorial, I'm going to be talking about how to prepare transcripts for import into the program so that they can be linked to media files. And I've got a transcript open on the screen. This is the Diana transcript that connects to a writing assessment that one of the children completed. Here I've already done some, some work in getting it ready to be Put into the program. You can see that I've got a timestamp followed by the speaker name, and then I've transcribed the Turnit Talk. Each Turnit Talk is in its own paragraph. So in order to prepare your transcript for import, I really recommend that you go to the InVivo help menu, and I've got that pulled up for us. Um, look at the import transcripts segment, and there's a very informative segment here about preparing text files for import. There are a variety of formats that you can use. I've used the paragraphs that start with valid timestamps version. The other thing that I've done here is I've included speaker names, and this is something that you need to pay close attention to. The speaker name must be followed by a colon and space. Anytime you, the program sees a colon and space, whatever just precedes that is going to be put into the speaker column. So if you were to happen to have colons in other parts of the body of your transcript, you'll want to remove those so that it doesn't end up putting that the next word into the speaker column and starting a new line. So it's important to take a look at that. The other thing that's very important here is understanding timestamps and which formats can be recognized by InVivo. If you are importing a transcript from a transcription service like Rev.com or uh, Otter AI, they will put timestamps in your document showing the elapsed time from the beginning of the media file that you have sent them for transcription. You may need to do a little bit of reformatting of their transcripts, but in general, I found it quite easy to import. If, for example, however, you're using a service that does a different kind of timestamp, like Zoom, for example, Zoom records the clock time, the actual time on the clock at different points in your text, and that cannot be Im imported directly into InVivo. So let's go back and see if we can get our transcript ready for import. Uh, it must be saved as a text file, but we want to do a little checking on it to see if there's anything we need to correct. And in fact, in this one, you can see that my speaker is name is followed by a dash. And I'm going to need to fix that and make it followed by a colon and a space. So obviously you could search and replace that. This is a very short document, so it's easy for me to take care of that just one at a time here. Okay, now we've got the document formatted correctly, and you want to try to get as much of your formatting corrected before you import as possible. It makes it much, much easier. So next I need to save this Word file as a text document, so I'm going to save a copy. And I'm choosing down from file format at below here as .txt plain text document. I'll tell it to save. And you'll see an additional box pop up here talking about file conversion. And one thing you want to notice here is that you have several choices, Mac OS default, MS-DOS. You can check and see what you think about that. I'm going to choose Mac OS default. It looks like that's going to be OK. Typically it is, but if not, you can choose a different file format. So, so here's the plain text document that I saved, and that's, that's what I'm going to be importing into InVivo. So let's go back to in our InVivo screen and do the import. It's very important to recognize that you have to import the video first if you want to be able to hook the transcript to it. So that's, the, that's going to be my first job, is to import the Diana video. So I'm going to search for that, and um, it's here, so I'm just going to drag and drop. We'll wait while it, impor it imports. You'll notice here that it's uh, because this is a large file, it says it's not embedded, and that's the file location. That's what you want to see. And in detail view, you see the actual video here and the controls that allow you to play it. Here you see the media waveforms that we can actually code onto. And down below this section is where the transcript's going to appear, and you can read. So to import our transcript, first we need to turn on edit mode. We'll do that with the edit button up here at the top right. Next, you need to go to the import tab, then to files, and then transcript rows. This is going to allow me to look for the text file that I just created, which I see is out on my desktop, so I'm going to look for it out there. 
and notice I'm importing the plain text version. Only the plain text versions are, are bolded and not grayed out, so it makes it easier to find them. And so now we get a sense of what this is going to look like. One thing I notice is that I'm getting some odd characters. So I'm going to, instead of using automatic encoding, I'm going to try one that says Western Mac OS Roman. See if that gets rid of that, and it does. So I'm going to import like that. So it's always good to take a look at this box before you import. And here we have it. Here's our transcript with the start times that I brought in and then it always makes the end time of each entry the, the beginning point of the next one. So you don't have to begin to bring in the beginning and ending, just the beginning or just the ending. So here we have our transcript. And the reason why you might spend time to do this kind of linking is because there are some really great features that come along with having the transcript linked to the video. If I go to the bottom of the transcript and click Synchronize, then the, when the video plays, it will synchronize right down here. So let's just start at the beginning. Yeah, mine is a little different. It's, it's stuck on there. Period. And yours is printed on the paper. And then up here, I'm going to put my name. There's my D. So you notice that as the transcript plays, each row in the transcript is highlighted that goes with it. Now, if I also wanted to go to a particular row in the transcript, for instance, if I chose this one, then I could highlight that, and right below there's a little uh, right arrow button. If I click that, it will play the media for the selected transcript entry. So it plays just, so you can see just what has been highlighted. Now one thing that happens when you import this is that the speaker row goes to the right and I don't really like that. So I'm going to pull that over and reorder these columns so that I've got the timestamp, the speaker, and then the transcript. Then I can take a look and see if there's any changing that I need that I want to do to the way this is imported. One thing I see is that my header row that was called Diana's transcript has been imported as a as a row in my transcript and I don't really need that. So I'm going to double click on that and then I'm going to right click and I have a chance to delete row. Okay, got rid of that. Now, the other thing I noticed is that I uh, made a mistake when I was creating the transcript and in this particular row, it, the name of the speaker, Ms. Debbie, had us a colon but there was no space, so therefore it did not get it, Ms. Debbie did not get imported into the speaker columns, but I'd like to fix that. So as long as I'm in edit mode, I can actually change the transcript right there, take that out, and I can type in on my own Ms. Debbie and correct that. So now we have a corrected transcript imported into Envivo. So it's really quite easy as long as you are thinking in advance that you're going to import this to create your transcript so that it can be imported. And when you do import it, it's going to be directly linked to the video segments that go for each row.